caught up in your presence I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this whole moment I never want to leave Welcome back everybody I pray that you're all doing well. If you're tuning in for the very first time, I'd like to encourage you to give me about two or three more times on listening to the message, and I hope to inspire you, lift you up, and encourage you in getting closer to Jesus Christ. You know, with this coronavirus going on now for four or five weeks, I've noticed, and I've talked to a lot of people, that what they're used to doing, they haven't been doing. For instance, going to work. A lot of people now are forced to work at home with their children, not going to school. They're used to going out, camping, or going to the park, or going to the movies. They can't because everything is closed. So what's happening is people are now being stuck into their homes waiting for this virus to pass. But I believe in spite of what's going on this morning, I believe God has got a message for you. It's about relationships. And the title of my message is, We Were Formed to Have Relationships with One Another. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 5, it says this, His unchanging plan has always been to adopt us into his own family by bringing himself to himself and through Jesus Christ. I pray this morning that God would adopt you this morning into God's family. And wherever you are this morning, wherever you're sitting or whatever you're going through, and if you don't have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I'm going to invite you to a family of God. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for the anointing of the Holy Spirit, Father that will lift up our ears, Father God, to, to listen and pay attention and let you minister to our hearts. And whatever we're going through right now, Lord, you have the answer. We're trusting in you this morning to bless your people as they listen in. No matter where they are right now, Father God, open up their eyes so they can see that you have a plan to build in this relationship with you, Lord. Bless your people this morning. Amen. You see, this phase adopt us unto his family. What does that mean? It's more appropriate today because what do we have today? We have a lot of broken families. We have uh, dads and moms divorced or separated. So who's raising the kids? Grandma's raising, raising the children or aunties are raising the children. And what's been happening is, God says, I want to do something new to bring these families back spiritually. The second purpose is, in 1 Peter 2.17, it says this, love your spiritual family. You see, once you become into a, a, a being a Christian, he adopts us and he brings us into this spiritual family. So we're never alone. That's what God wants to do. He wants, to, you, to, wants us to be a part of his family. Fellowship. One of the things I've talked to my young people in these past couple of weeks is what they miss is fellowship. All they're doing is eating, watching a little TV, reading the Bible, praying, eating, back and forth. And what's happening is they're missing getting together with fellowship. But what is fellowship? It is loving God's family. In 1 John 4, 21, it says this, a person who loves God must love others as well. When we become a follower of Jesus Christ, we get an assignment to love God's family. How do I do that, Pastor? In 1 Timothy 3, 15, it says this, so you will know how to live in a family of God. You see, when I first got saved, I didn't know what it meant to have a family of God. I didn't know what it meant and what was expected of me. 
But once you become a child of God, all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit will guide us and direct us and how to get closer to our spiritual family. This place that we're talking about, spiritual family, it's not a building, it's not an institution, it's not a club, it's a family of believers that come together and have one thing in common, and his name is Jesus. You see, it's impossible to fulfill the promises of God without having that church family. I've heard people say, I don't need a family. I have four steps right now in what it means to have this relationship with Jesus Christ. First thing God requires is membership. Choosing to belong. You see, folks, we have a right to choose whether to believe or not to believe. That means to find the church family, you need to make a choice to get to connected. Now, I don't know where you are right now with Christ Jesus, or you don't know him, or maybe you walked away. But God is saying in Ephesians 2.19, you are members of God's household with every other Christian. You see, you didn't choose your parents. You can't say, well, I, I, I want a different... No, God assigned those to you. But we can choose to belong or not belong to a church family. I've heard people say this. I'm a Christian, but I don't belong to a church. I just study the Bible at home. That doesn't make sense. You have to live out your spiritual walk. It means being a Christian is to be a believer with other believers. For instance, it's like a football player. He's saying, I'm the captain of the team, but I don't need the other 10 players. I'm going to do it all by myself on the offensive team. Sounds ridiculous. It can't happen. It doesn't work. How many of you have heard people say, well, I believe in God, but I hate the church because it's filled with hypocrites. I've been to churches before, and people lie, and people smoke, and people drink. They're a bunch of hypocrites. Some of us maybe have been burned out by going to church because of these hypocrites. But God still wants us to find the place where we belong. You see, a Christian without a family is like an orphan. We have no one to answer to. Some of us today maybe had that bad experience in the past about going to church. And maybe that's put a little stain on your heart and you're more reluctant to going back. And you're listening to my voice today. If that person is you, at the end of the message, I'm going to have a prayer for you that will invite you back into the family of God. You see, God wants us to belong to his family. In Romans chapter 5, verse, uh, I'm sorry, Romans chapter 12, verse 5 says this. In Christ, we who are many forms one body. Not separate bodies, but one body. And each member belongs to each other. You see, once we make that decision, we belong together as a family. We're members together. You see, there is a symbol that's called baptism. In 1 Corinthians 12, 13, it says this, when we are baptized, each of us now, we're part of that resurrection. And that resurrection means this. We were dead spiritually before we knew God, and when we resurrected with Christ, Christ became into our hearts and gave us a new life. You are now saying we are part of the believer family. Second, first we had membership, now we have friendship. Learning how to share. Life is not about, about being alone. I know as a young man, I was out there conquering the world, but I was alone until I found my mate. Why? Think about Adam and Eve. Adam was first created, but God looked down at Adam and says, oh, he's alone. And he laid him down, took his rib, and created Eve, so he wouldn't have to be alone. We need friends all around us. In Acts chapter 2, verse 44, it says this, all the believers met continually together and shared everything 
each with each other. Notice how you cannot develop friendships without meeting together. So when you say, I'm a Christian, but you don't go to church, you're going against what God said in his word. He wants us to come together. He wants us to fellowship. He wants us to be members of the family. So we don't have to be alone. And we cannot develop friendships without sharing. What are we supposed to share, Pastor? Well, in Proverbs 27, it says this. Iron sharpens iron. So one man sharpens another. People will learn from one another. No one's an island, folks. And in everything you learn in life, you learn purposely by trial and error. You're going to go through life and have a lot of pain. Second thing the Bible says, we should open up our homes to each other. In 1 Peter 4, it says this, that is where you really get to know people. I love fellowshipping now. Why? I get to know other Christians and what they're going through and what their trials and tribulations are. And we're able to help each other out by lifting each other up, by praying for one another. So we don't get discouraged. We started what's called a small life group. What's a life group? A life group is a great way to meet new people. So if you have a talent and you come into the church, we're going to match you up with somebody of like talents. So you have something to talk about. You can share with each other. You can say, hey, I love football. Well, guess what? You can be a football together. Well, I, I like uh, hiking. You match up with somebody that's hiking. And all of a sudden, we start to make friends. I encourage you. Don't keep all your mistakes to yourself. Why don't you share them with the rest of us? The Bible says in Galatians chapter 6, share each troubles with, the other, with each other. Let's not forget meeting together in Hebrews chapter 10. You see, it's not right to be alone. God is telling us we need to come together. Instead, let us encourage one another. The primary purpose of a group, even just two people, is this, to encourage one another. In a moment of true friendship, we'll be born from a problem. And I say to you, if you don't really have a deep friendship right now, wait until you go through a difficult time. And that cannot happen unless you're disconnected and distanced. Step number three, partnership. Doing our part. In 1 Corinthians 3, it says this, we are partners working together. 58 times in the Bible, it says we are with one another. We serve one another. We love one another. We pray for one another. We encourage one another. That's what the Bible is about, folks. The Bible says we must put up with one another. I had one time somebody tell me, Pastor, this brother over here, he offended me. You know what I said? Pray for him. Love him. And forgive him. We can't separate the body because of our personalities. We're all being put together. And we have to learn to live with one another. How does it work, Pastor? True love is put into action, not just in words. It's easy to love people that love you. The hardest part is loving people that disagree with you. Coming in from a different area of town. Arizona has become the melting pot of the United States. Everybody seems to be coming into Arizona. Why? Because of the beautiful climate. Yeah, we've got the hot months in summer. But think about it. Eight months out of the year, it's short sleeve weather. So people are coming in from all over the place. And we have to learn as believers how to accept one another and love them as well. Ephesians 4.16 says, The whole body is fitted together perfectly, and each part does his own work. It helps the other's part to grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. 
Since we're a part of God's body, we need to work together to get things done. How many of you are Diamondback fans? I know baseball has been put on hold, but think about it. I'm from New York City. Look what your Diamondbacks did in 2001. 2001, they beat the New York Yankees. And would you realize this? Their payroll is half of what the New York Yankees payroll is. But I bet you right now, if I can find one person to name five members of the Diamondback team, you'd be special. We don't know them. Why? Because they're away from us right now. But in the body of Christ, we got to get to know each other. Not as distant players, but as family members. Same thing is in the Bible. As each part does his own special work, it helps the others to grow. So if you see a weak brother, you pray for them. You help them. You encourage them. So what happens to the body? It starts to become healthy. It starts to grow. It's full of love. I heard a story about Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa was sort of like an evangelist, and she had her mission in India. And one day, she goes to India, and all she handles are death and disease on a daily basis. And somebody walked up to her and says, why is it, Mother Teresa, all you do is you hug people that are filled with urine, uh, 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 they have this sickness and disease and they're dying and every person she turns around and says listen when I look at them I don't look at the urine I don't look at the disease I don't look at I only smell the smell I see Jesus in them and I believe that's something important for us if we continue to come in these next few weeks if you are new watcher on television right now I encourage you to keep watching the message you will never be the same because here at Breath of Life we're encouraging our people to reach out to reach out those hurting people and guess what when you invite your family member to watch uh, this video message guess what they're going to turn around and say why do I have to watch that message you know what you can tell them I'm going to meet Jesus, and I want you to experience the same thing. Do not think that this is a program. Do not think that here at Breath of Life, Breath of Life, we're just raising up just to get your money. No, that's not our purpose. Every time you read or memorize or ask someone to come and watch this video, what's happening? They're going to want to get involved in a life group because they're isolated right now. They want to get involved in something that they can believe in. And yes, his name is Jesus. Step four, loving believers like a family. In Acts chapter two, it says, they were like a family to each other. The ultimate display of fellowship to the believers all around us begins on how we treat one another. Their family. In Romans 12 it says, be devoted to each other in a loving family. The purpose of the church is to care for other people, not just ourselves. And I believe what's exciting about people coming to church, why? They feel good when they help somebody else. Life is not about accomplishments. Life is not about only about yourself. It's about loving God, loving people, and serving the world. One of the toughest things that we're going to go through, can you imagine this? Someone in your family is dying, and you have to go and sit next to them. I know myself, I've witnessed it many a time, where someone was sick, and they were dying. Do you think their last breath was, hey, Tony, do me a favor. Can you go get my awards that I, I accomplished in college? Uh, can, can you go get my best books that I've read? Can you bring them to me? No. You know what they want next to them? They want their family and friends sitting next to them. Why? Because that's what they felt in building those relationships. 
It's not about material things. Material things can't give anything back to us. Brothers and sisters, I hope it doesn't take you that long before you come to God. I hope you do not discover the truth on your deathbed. Learn it now. In John chapter 13, verse 35, it says, your strong love for each other will prove to the world that you are my children. One day we're all going to be standing in front of God. What will Jesus ask us? He's going to ask us, what did you do for me? Here at Breath of Life, we want people to know that this church is not about just hearing a message, coming together, clapping hands and raising our hands. No, it's about going out there and serving the people out there in this community. It's about getting up and going out and expressing your Christianity by loving other people and helping other people and sharing the gospel with other people. All of those things can be great, but if we don't love one another, it's like a symbol. It's like a gong. God doesn't hear us. We need to have that love and compassion for one another. So, Pastor, how do I put this in perspective today? I've been listening now for so many minutes. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, and then we're going to pray. Are you a part of God's family this morning? If you're sitting there hearing my voice, maybe somebody loved you so much and invited you to come and sit in their house and view this message. And maybe you always wanted to be a Christian, but like I said earlier, you were afraid of past experiences. You were afraid of the hypocrites that you saw, but something in your heart has been drawing you closer and closer to God, where you're finding out all the material things that you possess really didn't fulfill in your heart. It's like going to a restaurant. You go to a restaurant and you eat a meal. And after the meal is over and you walk out the restaurant and you turn to your wife and say, honey, I'm still hungry. Well, it's the same thing with the church. Maybe you've been doing things on your own. You've been eating your own lifestyle. But something inside you says, I'm still hungry. And you know what you're hungry for? Jesus Christ. Everybody's created by God, but not everybody is a child of God. You have to choose this morning. Be a part of God's family or not. But God gave us one condition in Galatians chapter 3. You are all children of God through faith in Jesus Christ. And if you haven't committed your life to him, I hope that you do that this morning. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord God, that we don't have to go to life disconnected, that we don't have to go through life not being able to reach out to people of like-minded. Lord, help us this day, Father God. You're creating a family here, a breath of life, Father, that we can now be able to come together in love. I know it's been rough right now, Lord, with this virus that separated us, but we know it's only temporary. And then once we come back together, we're going to be able to rejoin in fellowship with one another. Hallelujah. Amen. For those sitting here today, and you want to choose to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, I ask you right now to pray along this. Lord, I want to belong to the family of God. Lord, I've been drifting for X amount of years, and I found out that I've reached the end of my road. Nothing seems to satisfy me anymore. But now I realize I want to be a part of this family that you talked about. And Lord, I have many sins, and I want to be you to know that I've committed my life to you. Romans 10, 9 says this. If you confess your sins to the Lord, he shall believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. Folks, if you believe right now, raise your hands where you're sitting and say, Father, I'm a sinner. Come into my heart. Renew a right spirit in me. 
I confess my sins. And some of you, it may be many. And I want you to come in so I can be a part of this family. Amen. And if you've done that this morning, guess what? I'd like you to give me a call or the person that invited you to watch this message. Let them know so they can contact me so I can pray for you. Hallelujah. Because now you have a new beginning. And that beginning starts today. And when you hear this message, tomorrow you're out there in the world. We want to pray for you so we can encourage you and lift you up and find the local church. Hopefully, maybe you'll come to Breath of Life. But if not, find a local church. Thank you very much. I hope to see you next week. God bless you. Good morning, friends and family. Welcome to Breath of Life Church located at the beautiful foot of South Mountain, 202 West Dobbins Road, Phoenix, Arizona. We are a diverse and family-oriented church where you can experience Jesus' love and fellowship through His body of believers. Looking for a home church? We are here. Contact or message us if you need prayer or would like to know how to get involved. Thank you for your generous donations, tithes, and offerings. If this is your first time giving, you can scan with your phone or go to our website, breathoflifeag.org. giving. You can also mail your check or money order to Breath of Life, Field to West Dobbins Road, Phoenix, Arizona, 85041. Your support and prayers are appreciated as we continue to meet the needs of our community. Again, let us know how we can help you. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe to this page. By doing that, you will automatically receive notices about our messages and happenings. Remember, at Breath of Life Church, we're our family, and there's always room for one more. Take me back